Hello and welcome back to Deadfire. So, two things are very important right now. One, we have progressed the main story. Now this means that all of our little story elements are going to start progressing along the way. Starting with Eddiers. So we've got to go to the Partisans of the Lighted Path, which is in Nekataka. We were told to see the Hazanui. Kind of casually, but we were told to see the Hazanui, so we'll go and see them. We should also go and see Queen Onikaza. We should go to the Ashen Mall to see Aethys, even though we didn't have the conversation with them, which I think we were meant to have, but anyway. And, well, we should also go to the Deck of Many Things, if it happens to be in the way. So yeah, lots of things to do. Is there a way Consider over there? Done. There is a way over there, but I'm not going to do and destroy the bodies for, like, free copper. Let's head back. Right. Current party, I'm trying to think if there's anybody we want to ditch. We're fine, I think? Uh, excuse me? Uh, that's a lot of Royal Dead Fire Company people here. How's our opinion with the Royal Dead Fire Company? Just our curiosity? Oh, we're good, we're good. Hey guys! What's, what's up? Hasango is a mound of wreckage on the horizon when you see a dozen junk sailing towards you. Even at this distance you can tell they are making good speed. One of the ships pulls alongside yours, and a well-dressed Amawa man approaches the edge of the deck. You recognize Atstura, the Grand Secretary of the Royal Deadfire Company. Timely of you to show up, boss. I was just scribbling down my daily report. Maya folds her arms and nods across the gap. I'm afraid it will have to wait until I return to the Brass Citadel, he nods at Maya. It is good to see you again. I see you continue to leave your mark. He is gazing towards the sango with a peculiar smile. The Adra beacon, visible even here, shines brightly. Nekataka is a buzz with praise for your deeds as well. A pleasure to see you again. Your manners do you much credit. I want to extend a thank for the Royal Dead thanks of the Royal Deadfire Company for what you've done here. He raises one hand towards the Adra Beacon. You've restored a valuable asset, whether or not that was your intention. He gives you a quick, sly smile. The others at the palace will want to hear of this, no doubt. And you may as well take credit while the deed is fresh. Alright, perhaps so. Atsura nods. At any rate, I have much to attend to, and it seems you do as well. Clear skies, Captain Palxa. Atsura nods as the crew makes ready to sail once more. Alright. Twelve is a bit much, but okay. Well, if we're going to the palace, I know who we're ditching. And I know who we're ditching for. Wait. Oh, I'm going the right way. I just wasn't really sure, and then turns out I was. Oh, link to check. Let's have a look. Dead Fire Merchant, Dead Fire Merchant. Ah, Captain uh, Thanik. He's the... Uh, de he is the... Um, deck of many things. I think he's a shot. Oh. You blink and find yourself standing in the knee-high grass of an endless field with the day just falling into dusk. I think I just figured out what's about to happen. Are we about to speak to Aethys? The grass still holds the warmth of late afternoon sunlight, but a chill breeze blows at your back, raising goose flesh down your arms. Uh, Aethys or Remergant? The chur and trill of night jars rises with the wind. In the inky bruise of the sky, stars ignite by the ones and twos. You know what, I'm thinking this is our god talk, actually. The tolling of a single bell joins the chorus of birdsong. Yeah, that's Helia, and the bells are still Helia? Then another. The sound surrounds you. Every stalk of grass bears a delicate silver bell on its end, bobbing in the wind. The chill breeze becomes a howling gale and the tide of ringing bells sweeps you off your feet. It carries you like flotsam through the sea of grass. Then, the earth falls away. The wind ceases, and you are sent tumbling up into the dark of the sky. Alright, 
attempt to speak with the gods. Watcher. The voice of the Pallid Knight shakes the earth at your feet. You have returned to Bareth's realm. Your soul once more called to attend the wishes of the God of Death. You know I'm starting to look forward to these chats. You can't be certain, but you think you might see the barest hint of a smile tugging at the edges of the Pallid Knight's lips. Once again, you have spoken with the Child of Light. Um, no, but perhaps you could tell me about it. Tell me what you have learned. Ah. He makes for Magwin's teeth. Intriguing. The Pallid, the Pallid Knight stares past you, pensive. Force of habit, force of habit. Okay, so basically we spoke to Aethys and he just said, I'm going to Magwin's teeth. And that's about it. Okay. Wow, attend. Tell me what your many eyes perceive. Her words ring out, and a heavy silence descends. In the silence breaks the murmur of countless voices. Ooh. They speak all at once in languages both known and unknown to you. I love it, because we haven't seen WoW before, and he looks awesome! Okay, let's see if I can work these people out. Remregant. Admirgant. Gondor, no, that's Abaddon. Yeah, that's Abaddon. Whale. Galloway. And his two dogs, so definitely. Okay. I'm not sure. Wait. I'm trying to think. I'm going through the gods in my head. So the Skane, Barath, Galloway, Whale, Abaddon, Remergant, Wodica. Helia, Magrin, Bera. Who the hell is this? Fish Lady? Tangaloa? Who is also Bera? I'm not sure. In the space beside Bereth, an eye blinks open, followed fast by several more. They are round, keen eyes of kith, the slit eyes of snakes, the small, dark marbles of birds, the bulbous lanterns of deep sea fish. Here we are. Oh, that's creepy. A figure walks through the cloud of eyes as one might step through a door. It is an Orlan, then a pale elf, an ocean human, a naga. Each of them eyeless. They are well. This is the first interesting thing to happen in ages. And we do so love a riddle. The figure wears an Amawa's grin, and the many voices beneath its own titter. We'll say nothing. We see between the strings of the world, and Eovis is there, strumming them like a lute. His tongue is still, yet he sings of a coming joy. I was just thinking, Whale is kind of like our spirit god. Like, they, they are our god. It's all about the mystery. It's all about that, you know, it's all about the knowledge and the mystery. Like, that is it, about the riddles and the solving. Perfect. What tune he plays, we do not know. It is complex, ever shifting. One moment vibrating in harmony, the next in discord. A man strides through the door to Bareth's realm. Behind him lope wolves with lolling tongues, and jungle cats whose long tails twitch with every step. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry about what we did, Galloway. Galloway, the changeling, arrives. And he brings with him the wild heart of Aeora's untamed places. Fast on Galloway's heels, a small wave of seawater washes across the tiles. It pours off the edge of the platform and cascades down into the beyond. You know who I forgot? Andra. From out of the water rears a glowing lure, then the head of a gigantic fish. The round black eyes of Andra roll to meet yours. My gift bearers bring to me that which Kith most want to forget, and in their memories I see you as Wild does. You are the one who leaves chaos in his wake. You knew one of them once, my gift bearers, Meneha. She longs to forget and to help others do the same. But when given the chance to aid her, you did not. Yeah, we told her it would be better to remember. 
You are a capricious creature, like Aethys. Andra's storm-black eyes roll away from you. Aethys is nothing if not resourceful. I admire his nerve. Also, I should point out that Menea, if you don't know, is from the White March DLC. So, or DLCs. So that's cool that they brought it up at all. In the Changeling's voice, you hear the soft patter of rain on leaves and the rush of wind through treetops. Mm, say nothing. If his journey leads him back to us, he has proved himself worthy of return to the fold. Aethys does not return to us. He returns to execute some grand plan. We must stop him. Andra's voice rises like a tide, panic riding its crest. The doors lining the walls of Bareth's realm slam open in unison. Warped pieces of ancient armor and the remnants of discarded weapons roar through the doorways. They meet in the center of the room, in a shower of sparks and form, the vague figure of a man. Abaddon. Finally, a blacksmith's sledge hurdles past your shoulder, and the figure snatches it from the air. A man made half of metal and half of ruined skin stands before you. The rounded metal of a well-worn shield makes up most of his skull, his right eye socket, and jaw. His mouth is pulled forever into a half grimace. If Aothas has something foolish planned, perhaps we can turn him from that path and set him down a more productive one. Abaddon's words crash and screech together, like long steel gears forced to movement for the first time in centuries. Abaddon speaks with a child's naivety. Okay. Um... We'll say nothing again. He violates not their realms, but mine. I feel his urgency in every stamp of his feet along my spine. I will send tsunamis to slow him, if Margren would stir the earth beneath Margren's teeth. The water at your feet recedes. Lava oozes up through the shallow water and a woman made from the guts of the earth emerges. She settles her characteristic broadsword on her shoulder and sighs a cloud of smoke and ash. Hello, Margren. Margren returns. In the age when our steps carved valleys across the face of Aeora, our bodies were impervious to all but the strongest attacks. I doubt fire and water will be enough to stop him. But I will bear down upon Aethys with all the heat and fury of the Earth. If I must. There must be another way to stop him. The death of thousands now could prevent the death of millions later. Hmm. We'll say nothing. The deep, bellowing cry of an aurochs shakes the ground beneath your feet. The cry drones on and on, a moan without end. I've got to say, Rim Regant, he's not going to be pleased to see us. While's many eyes squeeze shut, Andra slips back beneath her waves. Magrin dissipates in a swirling cloud of steam. Galloway's beasts cower and whine. Only the pallid knight stands impassive. My end comes to all things in time. Should Aethus care to hasten the inevitable, I welcome his efforts. Hmm. What could Aethus possibly gain by destroying Eora? Aethus seeks a slate wiped clean. Freedom from the endless revolutions of Barath's wheel. The final emancipation of the countless stolen mortal lives the gods hoard within themselves. The Child of Light will not choose the hour of my death. Magrin tests the edge of her broadsword with a smoldering finger. He sows chaos in his longing for a radiant dawn. 
So much will be lost in the cacophony of fear his actions inspire. The crack of thunder rends the air. The gods fall silent. Crack of thunder. There's a god is there a god I forgot? In apart from Aethus. Who it's not. Okay, so I'm going through them. Bereth, Remergant, Ab Abaddon, Whale, Galloween, uh, Andra, Magrin, um, yeah, and then we got Skane, the Thunder. So it's Skane or Aethys, right? Those are our two options. Did I forget one. Wodica. Could be Wodica. I think it's Wodica. We can wait no longer to act. Oh, it was just the Pallid Knight getting everyone's attention. Speak with him, Watcher. Discover what it is he plans. I'll do my best. Water begins to creep across the floor. It swells, runs swiftly, and catches at your ankles. You scrabble at the tiles, but it's no use. The current's pull drags you off the edge of Barith's realm and into the fathomless beyond. You splash down in water so dark you can't see the bottom. Then, the water recedes, gone like a dream upon waking. The hard wood of your cabin's floor presses against your spine. The gods are gone, but you remain. All right, I love those sections. They're brilliant. All right. Ooh. A colorful parrot alights on the railing of your ship. A missive bound to its leg bears the signal of the Kahanga tribe. Captain Palksa, it would be my honor to host the saver of Asango at the Kahanga Palace. Nekitaka is a city for the Hoana and outsiders alike, and there is no shortage of work for Kith who are determined to be as useful as you. Should you have the stamina for a good climb, palace at the top, Serpent's Crown could be your second home. Think on it. Regards, Queen Onakaza the second. Hey there. All right. Well, leave it to me. Yes, we're gonna talk to the statue. I got. I'm glad to see you in good health, my lord. All right. See ya. I, I guess we do need to just speak to everybody we haven't spoken to in a while, right? Watcher, tell me what's on your mind. Uh, you there... need me. I'll be two whoops and a holler away. Two whoops and a holler. Why is she blue? I can still feel those vines under my skin. But that will pass. Thank you. Alright. That's fine. She's blue. Hello. Yes. You only have to ask. Okay, and the only one we haven't spoken to out of those ones is Loth, then. Yes? Who has a lot to say, but nothing to us right now. Well, I guess it's time to go up to deck and see if there's anything there. And then to go back to the ship deck, I guess. Yeah. Alright. Back up. Okay. Well, we're about to discover, get a whole bunch more lore and story all in one go. Okay. Let's go. So... All right, I did say I know who I'm ditching. Hey, Zoti. Hello, Palagina. I mean, we're gonna be speaking to the Valian leader. We're gonna be speaking to the um, Republic's one. And we're gonna be speaking to the Huana's one. So we're taking those three. I mean, I could ditch Eddie. But who am I bringing? Aloth, I guess? Idea is a good marker, but actually, I think a Loth might have more to say. Hmm. We'll take those and we'll head up to uh, the Kahanga. Pa yeah, head up to Kahanga Palace. Okay. We'll see. This party is not too bad. You hear someone call out for your attention. We haven't had an encounter in Nekataka for ages. You're wandering through the streets when a man approaches you, cutting through the crowd. You've never seen him, but the look in his eyes suggests he recognizes you. Watcher, let me through. 
meadow folk man emerges from the crowd, red faced and wild haired. He pays no mind to the irritated pedestrians glowering at him. His bright eyes are fixed on you. You, you're the one who saw the miracle when Aethus rose at Cad Nua. Awe and conviction quiver in his voice. That depends who's asking. Latharn of the Children of the Dawnstar. I was working the fields at Hassango until recently. He grimaces, uncertain of how to continue. I've been having strange dreams. A wheel that spins and spins. An orchid of kawiki trees, each grown from the fallen fruit of the last. He scratches at his whiskered chin. Then, the spokes of the wheel break apart. The trees stop growing. Fruit, f fruit falls and rots until the ground is covered by festering, stinking pulp. Okay. Hmm. Why are you telling me this? He takes a deep breath. In these dreams, I also see you at the center of the wheel in the middle of the orchid. You were there when Aethys rose, and you seem to follow every place he's been. He works his mouth into a fretful pout as he gets to the crux of his concerns. Aethys has always meant rebirth and redemption. But so much death follows in his wake, both in the Saints' War and now, here, again. His wide eyes are full of questions. Hmm. Death and... well... N there are no easy answers I think fits us best. My people followed Aethys to war once. I wonder sometimes if we failed him when we lost. Or if we did that the moment we laid hand to blade. Please, you've seen more than anyone. You've got to have some idea of what it all means. How we can make sense of it. Hmm. Um, I don't know. How do we? Um, I don't know how we're gonna raise. I guess we have to go for the top one. That's kind of our our mo. I can't tell you how to respond. You'll have to figure this out for yourself. Lathar nods, letting this sink in, and Aloth likes it. Good. I won't keep to you, but you've given me a lot to think about. Thank you. He turns away and allows himself to melt into the crowd. I wonder if we're going to see Lathorin again. That could be interesting. Hmm. Back in our second attempt to the Kahanga Palace. I wonder if that's... Yeah, it might have an impact later. I never... Good. Definitely. Oh, interesting. He decided to tell us about Tangalore right in the middle. Right. Well, looks like we're all ready to go. Let's just, well, I might as well set up a formation. I mean, I don't think there's going to be a fight. But I'm just going to say, in the series before, I have thought that, and I have been proven very wrong. So, let's have a look. There's nobody here. There's only the prince. Oh. All right then, I guess we will head upstairs. Hello everybody, hello. Yep, nice to see you. I hope she wasn't telling us come get the missions from Prince Aruhi. That would be um, unfortunate. I think she's probably telling us to deal with the Wahaki. But we'll see, rooftop. Right. And, hello. You return intact. Nagati is not always kind to those who travel upon her domain. Onakaza touches her brow and nods. That's a lot of experience. I mean, we're max level, but that's a lot of experience. My brother speaks of your journey from Motare Okozi. Mostly, he mourns the loss of his expedition. Unikaza looks out on the city and sighs through her nose. Scholars pour over your findings as if a charcoal rubbing could build a bridge to Ukaizo. I have learned to restrain my optimism. 
A messenger from the jaws of Tangaloa speaks with the voice of wisdom and change, I say. She raises her brows at you. It is fitting that yours should be the voice that tells of Hasongo's fate. What did you see there? Some Naga occupied the colony after Aethys drained the Adra. I let them live. The snakes are on edge. Where comes this new boldness? Unakaza thumbs her chin and narrows her eyes. Far be it for me to complain if they make trouble for outsiders. There is a weariness to her thoughts that she doesn't bother to hide. What of Aethys? If you know why he terrorizes the dead fire, speak on. I'm to meet him at the great volcano of Ashen Maw. If he fears neither ocean nor magma, I wonder that anything can stop him. Unakaza thumbs her chin and considers. If Aethys makes for Magrin's teeth, I say the Rathun will grind him to dust for the praise of their warrior matron. Her brow rises with interest. Ah, are those all the people I killed up there? That's unfortunate. Even if they fail, it will be an enemy cleared from my plate. This is the gratitude of Nagati, I say. Rathun? The fiery children of Magrin devoted to their mother with a fanatic zeal. Bothersome, but the least of my troubles now. From Port Maje to Hasongo to Magrin's teeth, Aethys follows a rich vein of Adra. It takes him northeast to more interesting territory. In the deepest memory of the tribes, we have told stories of Magrin's teeth. Embellished sailors' fables, Akira, but not without some truth. My people speak of treacherous seas, lakes of fire, and the ancient warriors hammered to life on Magrin's anvil. Onikaza props her chin on her fist and looks you up and down. Ashen Maw is the grandest and most accessible of the peaks. It is the sharpest tooth in Magrin's jaw. Prepare yourself for a fight. I will, Highness. If you make preparations in Nekataka, I say we can help each other. He sits up straighter and regards you with a level expression. I must keep the city's peace, and I have only so many arms and eyes. While the dead fire screams, I would see Nekataka outlast the storm to come. What do you need from me? What I need is a lasting peace that will outlive my dynasty but I will accept peace of mind for now. What do you know of my water shapers, Herald of Bereth? Onakaza leans forward and rests her chin on her fist. Well, I know that he gave Rawatai no end of trouble in the early advance. Akira, if you recall history, then you know why I am protective over the guild. My water shapers are the levy holding back Rawatai's advance. An adept standing at the prow of a war canoe is enough to send the fleet scrambling for the shallows. She eases back, languid and satisfied. Don't get too cozy, Highness. That false sense of security will get you into trouble. Mia crosses her arm. Akira, I would not want your employers to think me easy prey. Onakaza purses her lips at Mia. This reminds me. I owe the Hazanui a basket of koiki in remembrance of the Battle of Nakara Atoll. Nakara Atoll. In 2758 AI, Rawatai encroached on the Hawana lands and made an enemy of the Wahihi tribe. The bloody conflict came to a head at Nakara Atoll, where Rawatai's warships decimated the tribal force. In the aftermath, the Hawana crown dispatched water shapers to sink Rawatai's most prized vessel, the Tenants of Iron as a reprisal and demonstration of power. We'll say nothing. While the problems of Aethys and overindulgent admirals plague these waters, I have summoned the masters of water shaping to Nekataka. Pit your strongest water wizards against their weight in iron and black powder, Highness. We can end this quickly. Akira. And how long will this contest last in open water? Unakaza tuts at Maya before shifting her focus back to you. Now would be the time to confer with Guildmaster Mairu, but she does not answer my summons. Unakaza looks out on her city, her hand squeezes down on the armrest. Hmm. Do you think something is wrong? 
It is too early to grow a forest from this coconut, but I would not dispatch you if I felt at ease. The guild can suffer no setbacks. If Myru shirks her duties, her queen would know the reason. She stares off into the distance and sighs, her gaze unfocused. Unfixed. Nagati, do not abandon us now. Onakaza turns her gaze back to you and flinches. This was not a thought she intended to share. Ooh, nice to see hey. you too. Interesting. Well, I think I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. And next time, we're going to go speak to the Valians. We're going to go speak to the Rawatayans. We're going to go do it, whatever Eddie wants to do. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.